Welcome to God at Work. Rich Marshall here, excited again to be with you. I want to read a verse of scripture, probably one of the more familiar verses in the Bible. It's Romans 8, 28, and it says, For we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. What a powerful word and what a reassuring word to know that God is working in your life to make everything good. I don't know what you think good might be or even how you would define it. All I know is this, God knows what's good and he's gonna help you to find it. My guest today is Randy Kay. I'm so glad to have him here. Randy and his wife Renee and family were part of our church back in California. When I first started getting the revelation that led to the book God at Work and ultimately to this show, so we're going clear back to when that revelation was coming out with this man. He and his wife have been through exciting times, up times and down times through the years, but God is working in their life right now in a powerfully, wonderfully exciting way. It's going to be fun to talk to this old friend and to see what God has been doing in his life since we lost connection for a number of years. They've just reconnected recently. Randy Kay will be joining me. You're going to want to be a part of it. Don't miss it. We're coming back in just a moment with more from God at Work. Want to make a difference in your place of work, but not sure where to start? God wants to work powerfully in your life, no matter what job you're doing, paid or unpaid. Bringing Revival to Your Workplace, written by Rich Marshall, the host of God at Work, provides unique spiritual insights that will equip you to live out your God-given call to the marketplace. Download this free practical guide and believe God for a spark of revival in your life today. Welcome back to God at Work. Randy Kay is with me today. As I mentioned, Randy and his wife, family were part of our church years ago in California. Really when we were getting the whole revelation about God at Work, didn't know where it would lead me, didn't know where it might lead you. But uh, Randy, so glad to have you with us today. Great to be here, Rich, thank you. You know, uh, so Randy sent me a note. He said, I've been hired, fired, promoted, demoted, downsized, upsized, greedy, needy, the top dog, and the bottom dog. <laughs> Randy, that, that just kind of spells a life story there. I, I think the interview is over at that yeah, point. That pretty much, pretty much says it all. And that says it all. Well, maybe we could define some of those. Yes. Well, I was one of the youngest managers within a Fortune 100 company, so I was full of myself mm -hmm. uh, as a new Christian. Uh, and I thought success really was defined by achievement, uh, not only in the world, but also in Christ's perspective. Okay. And I came to learn through that up and down period of life that all of us go through, yeah. that really the definition of success or the target of success, I should say, is not something that we should uh, try for because success is a moving target. It's very, very much dependent upon the situation. And depending on what you are gonna call success today and maybe not tomorrow, yeah. Absolutely. Right. So God taught me a, a profound lesson in life and you had read Romans 8, 28, but what I like is the follow-up scripture as well because what I found during the course of my corporate uh, living and working is that a lot of times, you know, satisfaction was just never arrived. It had to be the next greatest thing, okay. the next advent, the next promotion. And all of that was happening, but not to a great deal of satisfaction. So verse 29 of Romans 8:29 mm -hmm. says that we are now called, we are now destined, predestined to be made in the image of Jesus Christ. Right. What a profound purpose, because purpose, when you think about it, is really the destiny that we're called to, each of us, that describes whatever purpose we're going after, is a destiny that God calls us to, whether we know it or not. And so we're predestined to be made in the image of Jesus Christ. So the revelation for years truly through the course of my career and the ups and downs of life was that my overarching purpose, and I would say the overarching purpose for everyone that's mm. seeing this now, is that we are called to 
be in the presence of the Lord, to grow in Christ through the word, through fellowship, through prayer. And that makes it very simple. And once God got through to my thick head, and it took a circumstance that actually uh, put me in, uh, in a hospital bed mm -hmm. that really knocked me out. And it was a profound one for me that caused a revelation that uh, I wanted to share with our audience uh, today, if I may. You, you can. Let me, let me just pause here for a minute and say, I remember the first time I saw you and Renee in our church. And we didn't have a large church, but there were a few hundred people there. But I remember looking out and seeing this young couple, this is a few years ago, and uh, a good-looking couple. I didn't know who they were. And now my mind goes back to seeing you sitting in church first time I saw you there, and to hear you talk about the depth of wisdom that God has given to you, it's just, I, I'm just so amazed. You may have had it then, but I didn't know you then. And so I just knew you as a, a couple in the church, and I think we prayed for you and spoke to you a couple of times. We really got to know you over the last couple of years now after we both moved from that city to other places. But watching what God has done in your life, I know that that profound experience was for you one of those near-death experience as a health experience. So let's go to that. Let's see what God was doing with your life at that time. Yeah, well, I was in awe of you, Rich, at what is today, <laughs> looking back at one of the greatest, if not the greatest experiences within church in my entire lifetime and my wife's as well. But, you know, having gone through these series of promotions and I was really looking for something to do on the entrepreneurial side. Okay. So I was in the corporate environment and I bought a, uh, a newspaper. I oh. always had a dream of buying a newspaper and turning it into a media company. So it was a significant investment uh, for, for both of us and for us as a family. Well, uh, we came to find out that the disclosure in the business and the finances of the business were not what we thought they were initially. And so we had to go through that trial then of, a, of essentially a business failure or a divestiture. Right. And so we became, or at least I will say I became very uh, disconcerted. And my faith was challenged tremendously through that experience because our finances were consumed not only by the fact that now I was out of a job or out right. of a company, but also we had our daughter who was very challenged. She had suffered uh, many strokes in her childhood. So mm. we had increasing health care costs. Everything was perpetuating to mm. an extent where we asked that proverbial question, God, where are you? And yes. I think Job asked the same question. I think you know, a few have asked some, that one. To some yeah. extent, not in those right. exact words. So we were at a, um, a little coffee house, a Christian coffee house. And previous to that, I was so frustrated. I cried out to God. I said, God, I know you're out there, but I need to know you in an intimate, personal way. And I know the Bible. I've read it back and forth numerous times. I know all of those things, but I really need that intimate touch. And yes. I didn't know where it was coming from. So here we are sitting in this coffee shop in Escondido, California, and um, lamenting the fact that we had lost virtually everything at that point, right. financially at least. And so I said to my wife, well, at least we have our health. One week later, I was in the hospital mm. on my back, having come back from a long trip, suffering from blood clots. Wow. So they started in the leg, and, and because I left it go too long, they uh, traveled up to the lung, and I had five of them now log lodged in the lung, and so this is called pulmonary embolism, the third leading cause of death. Wow. Now, compounding that, that I was in this state of what they call hypercoagulability, that is... Oh, that's My a body. word I've never heard. So. Well, it's uh, for our, our uh, friends in India, it might be a word they've never heard as well. Yeah, right. But uh, compounding that problem was the fact that I uh, developed an infection from the IV. Mm. And so I 
experienced now blood clotting throughout my body. The physician could not draw blood from my arm. So I was questioning in my condition how I could breathe because I could not breathe well, right. but also how I could be alive. And then it happened. I uh, entered into convulsions and uh, then I lost consciousness. Mm -hmm. And when I was out, uh, God answered. So the good thing Rich, is, folks, Rich, the, the emotions just, are here, but we know he got through the Rich, yeah. Yeah. So this is a story I want to tell for everyone yes. involved. Yeah. And that is that I was in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. I was cheek to cheek with him. Wow. You know, the mere memory of it right. evokes this kind of emotion. Yes, yes. And, I, and I've talked to others who have had a near-death experience, and I think they're similar stories. Mm. And people have asked me, well, what was it like? Well, you know, did he talk to you? Did he tell you? Did you ask him questions? Those kinds of things. Well, I can tell you that when you're in the presence of the Lord, cheek to cheek, <laughs> and you've got one leg in this world and one leg out of this world, that there is this overriding sense of comfort. Mm. Wow. And of course, the Holy Spirit is referenced as the comforter. Yes. And there is just this sense of all the cares of the world, of the condition that I knew I was in at that time, all of these things in concern for my younger children at that time and for my wife really were not really of a concern in that I knew that Jesus Christ had it all under control. Wow. That Romans 8, 28, it would all work for good. But not only that, he told me so. Mm. And it wasn't a communication that, that occurred in a, in a conversation like we're right. having here. I knew that I knew, and he knew me, and I knew him. There was a sense of communicating with one another that, were be, that was beyond words. Really? Wow. And so I did have this wonderment as to whether I mm -hmm. uh, was going to uh, leave this world. And again, I didn't have concerns. I knew God would take care of everything. Uh, but Jesus did tell me that... Uh, uh, this wasn't my time and, and that uh, he would return me and, and that, that I had a purpose. Yes. And that purpose that I had learned through that experience was drawing closer to Christ to the point of never questioning him. Mm. My wife and I have now powerful prayers together. I did recover, by the way. Yes, it looks like I walked like out it. of there. <laughs> I have had some damage. I've had, I was a sickly child and that compounded. But I exercise, and God has returned my health to 95% uh, 90, of what it was uh, previously. He did heal me. When my wife and I pray today, having gone through this experience and the other trials of our life, and there have been a number of them, as everyone goes through, uh, I have always heard the same answer. And it was the answer that I heard when I was with him in the hospital or an exception to being in that bed. And it is this, trust me, trust, trust me. You know, James 1, 2 says that we should find joy in, in tribulation, in tribulation and right. trials. Well, what is that about? How can that possibly be? And I would contend uh, that our purpose is oftentimes, if not always, born out of trials. Mm -hmm. Certainly, it's the perfection yeah. of our faith and the perseverance that is tested through those trials. But finding purpose through pain really triggered what I had done for the remainder virtually of my career. Um, statistically, Rich, I just wanted to share with you, if I may, to show how many of us are suffering today. Uh, a Gallup poll recently showed that about a quarter of the population ha are disengaged from their work. Right. They feel like they've checked out, basically. Sure. Yeah. And many others are just disenchanted or disengaged mm. in other respects, or they're close to checking out. But here's an alarming figure that roughly 80% feel that in their work environment, 
that their overall wellness is being, has been compromised, that it's an unhealthy situation. Mm -hmm. And we have a pandemic throughout uh, the work world today. Yes, we do. Of those who feel like they're disengaged, they're not respected, you know, whether it's their boss or whether it's uh, the, the job, they feel that they're not uh, right. uh, placed appropriately in a position. And so there's a pandemic across the world. And so God put it on my heart to uh, develop some means uh, through training and development to help mm -hmm. people to thrive. And yes. Well, that's, a, you know, but let me just stop right here because what, what, what has happened, Randy? Because uh, you and I had a, a period of time when we weren't in touch with each other. I didn't know all of these things about your life and the trials of it. But what I've learned is so many of my guests that come on one after another have had this kind of a, not like yours, but something that was just a traumatic experience through which God began to move them to the next place. And I know that some of you are probably at that place where uh, maybe not as far down as Randy was, or maybe there even right now in a hospital bed watching, wondering, not knowing. But, but here's the point. Out of those situations, generally speaking, if you will allow him always, but generally speaking, God has a better plan for you than was there before. And when you tap into that, uh, and it's not like, like you said, you were in the presence of the Lord. You didn't say why. Uh, you, you just, thank you, Lord. And without words, you felt his peace. Folks, that is a reality that is there. So what, what Randy's doing now is this, uh, a, new, a new kind of training. And it's born out of his experience, born out of what he's done. But it's also born out of, of long uh, study, uh, a lot of hours. And, and we call it the power to thrive. And, and that word in itself should just give life to you when you hear it. Because thrive means I'm not losing, I'm winning, I'm not behind, I'm ahead. It means I, I'm good. I, all of the things that God wants for us, all the things that scripture tells us, is it the power to thrive or? Uh, it's the power to thrive. Yes. And I wanna encourage all of our viewers to get success out of their head. All right, it's not it is, success. Look it's, for it in the scripture, see how many times it's referenced by Jesus Christ. Thou shalt be, you know, God successful. successful. It yeah. just doesn't appear. Thriving, however, and it's a fairly, it's a, it's a Nordic word uh, that means that we should find purpose in life. Mm -hmm. And um, so thriving is a relatively in vogue world, word today. Right. And so we hear about surviving, striving, thriving. So what does that mean? I mean, the whole research began when I was an agnostic. Uh -huh. And uh, some know Johnny Erickson Tata, who's a yes. quadriplegic, one of the longest survivors of yes. quadriplegia. And I looked at her and I thought, well, if Johnny can accept Christ, having gone through what she's gone through, the pain and the trials and the tribulations, what's my excuse? Right. And so it precipitated another form of line of thinking, and that was, how does Johnny thrive? Well, obviously her faith in Christ, but there was a three decade research involving not just my organization. Right. Uh, I've been a training and director for, for companies, but also we engaged five other uh, large organizations to help us come up with a formula for, for thriving. And what does that mean? And how do you engage, how do you stay active uh, in thriving in life Per, uh, through all of the challenges and the trials. And it's not some Pollyannish answer as to, okay, you know, God, you know, will make it good, great. But when I'm in the midst of the trials, you know, that's not too assuring. I call those life transformational periods of times, seminal moments, and okay. we all have them. Yes. The seminal moment is that trial that caused something that is truly life changing. And that might be a death, a death of a loved one. It may be the loss of a job. It may be a trial within the job itself, a demotion, or whatever it happens to be that causes some cataclysmic shift in what we're about to do. Now, here's the irony. Most of us go through life and we wait for our seminal moments. 
we wait for something to happen to us, to life, mm-hmm. to, yeah, to let right. life happen. And I'm, I'm going to uh, uh, pose a challenge for our viewers, and that is don't wait. Plan. <laughs> yeah, grab it now. <laughs> plan for those seminal changes. Think through, what if I were to lose my job? What if I were to do something that's been on my heart that God has placed on my heart for a time? What if I were to just step into it? What if my loved one passed away? What would I do? Where would I go? Mm -hmm. So when we begin to think through these processes before they happen, it causes a, a mindset shift to think of possibilities. You know, God is a God of abundance. Yes. Most of us don't thrive because we live in a limited mindset of having just a finite amount of resources. Our whole economy and marketing is uh, dependent upon that way of thinking, you know, get it before the sale goes off right. or something yeah. to that effect. How, how is somebody going to get a hold of your power to thrive material? Because we don't have enough time here to, to give them all that, that's needed. So how, do, how is somebody, do they connect with you? Is, is this a training that's available? What's, what's next? It is. And so I wrote uh, The Power to Thrive, okay. which is the compilation that is the sum total of about 30 years of research. All right. We developed this into a course. We just recently launched it at the uh, uh, AD, ATD, which is the uh, Trainer uh, and Training and Development Association, the largest international conference in the world. So we developed a course. We launched this. We had people from all over the world uh, that stopped by our booth. Is, do you have to do it live? Is it online? What? Uh, how, do we, how do we do this? Yeah, so you can go to paysetters.training. Okay. And then on there, you can ask or request information or the next course or whatever's available vis-a-vis uh, broadcasting, webinars, right. e-learning, all of those good things. I, th- I think that uh, we're out of time, but I think what, what's going to happen here is that people are going to want to do this. In fact, I want to. I, I, and, I, and I know you, and I've, we've talked about this, and I've, I probably have read uh, some of that at least. Right now, I want to thrive. <laughs> Don't you want to thrive? <laughs> this is a message that we need. And it came out of Randy's lowest time uh, to bring him to his highest time. Really, the, the word thrive, you said, means purpose. And yes. if we could find life purpose, what a difference it is for us. I'll be back in just a moment with you. We're going to have some closing remarks. But you need to just jot down that website and so that you can get a hold of this because for sure, some of you like me need it. Randy, the time has moved fast. We're out of time. Thank you so much for sharing it. And hold that up again. Let's just see. It's the power to thrive, building the foundations of a thriving career and life, both for your life and for your career. Thank you, Randy. Thank you for watching. I'll be back with you in just a moment. God bless. Want to make a difference in your place of work, but not sure where to start? God wants to work powerfully in your life, no matter what job you're doing, paid or unpaid. Bringing Revival to Your Workplace, written by Rich Marshall, the host of God at Work, provides unique spiritual insights that will equip you to live out your God-given call to the marketplace. Download this free practical guide and believe God for a spark of revival in your life today. Welcome back to God at Work. God really is doing something right now in the world because He's working in His children's lives. Sometimes it's not what we expect that's going to produce the most growth for us. James chapter 1, verse 2 says, Count it all joy. He's talking to us, children of His, brethren. Count it all joy when you fall into various kinds of trials. What I'm finding is that people who fall into trials usually they'll let God work on them, come out of that stronger than they were when they went in it, although they don't know it when they're in the middle of that. So I just want to say to you today, like Randy shared, in the moment when when life was seemingly ebbing out of him, God began to assure him that there was a future. And out of that comes some of the probably his best years, his best training, his best books, his best ideas. That can happen for you as well. 
It's not easy to say, I count it for all joy in the middle of the trial, but God encourages us to do that because He knows the trial has a purpose. You're going through a trial right now. Maybe it's a big one. Maybe it's a small one. Maybe it's life-changing. Maybe it's even life-threatening. God wants to work through that to bring His plan and His power and His glory into you. Watch for it and be ready for it, and let your faith be built in the middle of those times. Let me pray with you right now. Father in heaven, I thank you that in the midst of trials, you are there. You are powerful. You're able to do what needs to be done to bring us through that trial. And Lord, while we're in the trial, teach us the lesson that we need to learn. Put in us that part of you that needs to be there in order to bring us out stronger on the other side. So Father, I have the faith today. Thank you to pray this. Thank you for the trials that come my way, knowing that those trials are going to build me into the man or the woman, if, if the case be, that God wants you to be. Let him work in your life. So thrilled that Randy Kay could come on today and share his story with us. So thrilled that it can touch you and let God work through you. Remember, God is at work doing great things. Let him be at work through you. Thank you for watching God at Work. You can re-watch today's episode or any other program in this series by going to god.tv forward slash VOD. We'd really love to hear from you. Send your thoughts to feedback at god.tv. Also, don't forget, download a free copy of Rich's book at god.tv forward slash work.